The following sports special is proudly brought to you by Arano Juice. Ask for it by name, delivered fresh daily. Kia ora everyone, I'm Barry Keenan. Welcome to our FTN Sports Special of this, the 2001 Arano Juice Ultimate Frisbee National Championships. Joining me in the studio, Bob Gentle, a name synonymous with Frisbee sports in New Zealand. Bob, it's been a long time since you rock and rolled on the Ultimate Frisbee field. Has much changed? Boy, lots of change, especially my fitness levels. Yeah, the old knees are a bit dodgy, it's taking me a week after a game to recover, so unfortunately serious ultimate is definitely out for me but the game has become deadly serious there's uh, now a new zealand league a tour with ultimate played right throughout the country uh, this year also ultimate is being played at world games in japan for the first time ever and uh, as i'm sure you're about to see we're in for a wild and fast time before we get into it let's check out some of the rules and regulations with our own ryan port <laughs> Ultimate is what you could call an eclectic mix of a sport, with elements of American football, soccer, netball and touch rugby evident in the game. How it's really similar to soccer and cricket, the catching, the throwing, the marking as well. It's just awesome, mate. It's like on the verge of touch, but faster. Yeah. It brings a lot of the stuff that you have from soccer, like it's a running, passing game, and so it's very dynamic and um, certainly keeps you very fit. The basic idea is to pass or throw the disc to a teammate who is in the scoring zone, located at each end of the field. Play begins with both teams at opposite ends of the field, with one side throwing or pulling the disc to the opposition. There is no running with the disc, and players have 10 seconds to pass the disc on. These 10 seconds are conveniently counted down by the defender. A turnover in possession occurs when the disc is dropped, blocked, or intercepted, and the defence then becomes the offence. A good ultimate player has a variety of attributes that enables them to excel. Speed is probably the most important component, I think. A good vision, good vision of where you've got to go to, where you've got to pat, like lines as in rugby. I don't know, it depends, like, some people aren't so quick, but they've got really good handling skills, and they can read the disc really well. Good passing, that's kind of essential. Speed, yes, speed. <laughs> You have to be pretty fit on this outdoor, it's a huge field and there's a lot of running around. Being tall helps and being able to jump helps. <laughs> it's very tactical, very technical and any mistakes you make the other team can capitalise on so that's, you've got to try and avoid those really. Ultimate is a non-contact sport with no overly physical play allowed and a foul is called when contact is made. One of the things that makes Ultimate unique is the absence of a referee. That's right, players are responsible for their own foul and line calls and resolve their own disputes. Ask any Ultimate player what they love about the game and they'll all tell you the same thing. It's the spirit of the game, that's like the biggest thing. This is primo spirit and stuff. The spirit of the game, enjoy playing with your mates. The spirit of the game, just the friendliness between the teams, which you don't really get in other sports. And in keeping with the spirit of the game, a feature of the aftermatch is the singing of a song or chant to the opposition. Should I make a dodgy ball? No, I haven't got the So that's ultimate in a nutshell. Any questions? Now how full on is that? Very few sports don't have a referee. I guess they were talking about the spirit of the game and that's what it means. That's exactly it. It's amazing really. You can go to a, uh, an ultimate tournament anywhere in the world, not win a game, but win the spirit of the tournament award and come away like champions. That's what it's all about. The whole idea of ultimate is no referees, no one else to make the calls, only the players make the calls. And of course, that way the game flows, it works well 
and everybody is very aware of what the spirit is all about. It's, it's a very big part of Ultimate. Certainly something rather unique in modern day sport, the spirit of the game. Time now for third and fourth playoff, and after four days of intense competition with the ten teams competing from around New Zealand and Australia, it was all down to third and fourth, an inter-island clash between Wellington's Club 52 and Christchurch's Chalk Dust Pixies. Yeah, they certainly choose some wild and wacky names in the sport of ultimate. Playoffs for third and fourth matched up the Chalk Dust Pixies in orange and Club 52 in black. Both sides adopting very different styles it was sure to be interesting. Club 52's game plan was based on the long pass, with runners heading downfield in an attempt to get open in the scoring zone, and they struck within the first minute to take a 1-0 lead. The Chalk Dust Pixie rely on a more quick and decisive style, with a pass and cut approach making for a fast offence, and they replied in the second minute to make it one all. The Pixies also play a tight defence, and put pressure on early to have Club 52 on the back foot searching for options. The Pixies defence is based on a zone structure, which was effective until broken, with streaking runners from 52 cashing in to score. After 10 minutes the Pixies lead 4-2, Club 52 turning on some tidy work to claw back a point. The Pixies meanwhile continued with their short passing game, and scored in the 20th minute to lead 6-3. Club 52's long game was full of gambles, but high risks made for high reward. They pulled back the lead to one in the 27th minute, before drawing level for the first time at 6 all. as the first half hour went in the books. We need to do one thing better, which is compete more passes and score more points. We come out firing, we play good D, we get the turnovers and then we play smart offense. So what we need is a quick dump just behind and then swing it across the field and then the flow pass from there. I don't think we should be afraid to just chuck it. I don't think we should be afraid to take the option, wrong options when they're on. And I don't think we should be afraid to throw break force passes. Run hard on D, don't bite on the break force cuts, don't bite on the break force passes, and squeeze them into the corner and just play smart offense. Two continued to prosper, and half-time saw them with a 9-8 lead, which they extended soon after the break with a controversial score. The Pixies responded and drew level at 10 all. Club 52 stepped up with an offensive outburst, scoring three times in three minutes, having 13 10 before the Pixies managed another with some nice interplay. As time passed the hour, the 52 continued to score steadily, leaving the tired Pixies defence behind with trademark long passes. Eventually triumphed 17-11 after an hour and a quarter of top class ultimate. Yeah, we're very happy. Third to uh, where we were seated, so we're pretty pleased to come out with that result. And it was a really good game. Really intense out there. Well, the place here from Lee. Um, our team do so well on I, don't, I think there's anything that we can that we can isolate. They're very, very good long game. You know, they're, they're always always got to in the zone. That's um, that's always difficult. We stuck to on defense actually. We changed the force later in the game and uh, kind of pushed them towards the wind a little bit. That makes a difference sometimes. Defense, I think, is the the key. We forced them to turn the disc over a lot, got them stuck on the sideline, and then we were able to capitalize by scoring a few goals uh, on those turnovers. We, we we tend to we tend to be really good at the transition. When it just goes down in the middle of the play, we tend to be really good at getting on O and playing really hard. We're not we weren't we weren't on that game this morning and I think probably uh this afternoon actually and I think probably uh, we had a we had a bit of a late night last night and didn't help us. <laughs>
awesome stuff and certainly one sport that has no problem with the equality of the sexes. No, it's good. At the level we play in New Zealand, it's set up by the NZFDA, the governing body here in New Zealand, to be a 4-3 mix, which means you've got to have at least three members of the opposite sex on the field all the time. So it means the game's going to grow at a, at a good level in New Zealand. Inevitably, we'll get to the stage where there will be sole sex teams, but at this stage, it's mixed tournaments, four guys normally, three girls. Righto, finals time. What can we expect? Uh, I think the final is going to be quite different from the game we've just seen between third and fourth. That game featured a lot of long shots to the end zone, a lot of sort of hopeful, is it going to get there type shots. I think in this game coming up between uh, Auckland and Australia, basically, there's going to be a lot of quick passing, a lot of quick movement of the disc, not scared to pass Dak down the field. I'm looking forward to this final. Let's get it on. Auckland's Bluefish up against Australia's West Island Warriors. Coming at you,